Hey, it's Big T. Today I am going to tie a pheasant tail and ostrich scud. Uh, this is a fly. We have some scuds in our local tailwater, not a ton, but it's just a buggy looking fly. And we're trout are opportunistic and not keyed in on any particular hatch, or you've got stock fish this is a good pattern I'm gonna start with a size 14 scud hook barbless scud hook uh, that I carry along with a 2.7 millimeter copper tungsten countersunk bead and I'm gonna tie in some small ultra wire in a copper color I'm using just black 70 denier Danville thread I'm gonna tie it back down around the hook bend to take advantage of some of the curvature and then I'm going to take some black uh, pheasant tail fibers I'm going to be pretty generous with this I'm probably going to cut off in the neighborhood of 10-12 fibers I'm not as concerned about keeping those tips aligned because I'm going to trim off the ends. I'm going to wrap my thread back up and tie this clump in towards the bead. So I want to keep the thickness of the body consistent. If I were to tie that in at the back it would potentially leave a little bit of a lump back there. I'm going to wrap back up one more time to the top behind the bead and I am going to use some fibers from an ostrich plume and that is green which will contrast really well with the black from the pheasant tail I'm gonna, again, I'm going to trim off the ends to keep everything lined up. Tie that clump in behind the bead. And wrap that back to the same spot and back up to behind the bead. I'm going to use my rotary feature. If you don't have that, just do a traditional wrap of the ostrich plumes up. Get them around that hook point. And as you can see, that in and of itself looks pretty darn buggy. Come over top of it to secure it a couple times and then we'll wrap in front as well before we trim now I'm going to take our pheasant tail fibers and the first thing I'm going to do is come underneath them with this copper wire and around the hook point the nice thing about that wire is it does generally, yeah, it moves around on you but as you see there, at least it stays in place a decent amount. It gives you the ability to work with it a little bit better. I'm going to lay this on the top of the hook shank and come over top of these fibers, pheasant tail fibers, with my wire. And so it will get pretty hidden in the ostrich plume but it will definitively show I'm going to lift up on this last one and come underneath and then secure that wire with some wraps it's not wanting to play ball there we go And we'll trim the wire off here. I've got a pair of trash scissors that I use for that. You can twist it if you want. 
numerous times to break it off. Tie that down real well and then come back over top one more time the pheasant tail. And we'll trim that off. I'll come in with a smidge of zap -a gap on my thread, a couple more wraps over, oops, and a whip finish, and that'll wrap this fly up for us. Obviously the color combinations are more than we can think about but that gives you a little bit of an idea of what the top of that fly is going to look like got a lot of legginess or bugginess coming out from underneath got good color contrast um, that fly will do well anywhere you've got scuds present or if you've got some opportunistic trout I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel, visit my store for these materials, and more.